Now, the southeast is gradually turning into a battlefield. Unknown gunmen have continued their reign of terror in the region, killing, maiming and destroying. On Monday, the faceless gunmen launched an attack on the office of the Independent National Electric Commission in Uwere, the Imo state capital. Three of the gunmen and the police officer lost their lives in the attack. Now, this happened eight days after an INEC office was attacked in the Oru local government area of the state. Uh, at the weekend, gunmen enforcing a set-at-home order by the faction of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra opened fire on traders at a market in Enugu, killing two people. Southeasterners are now living in fear, not knowing uh, when or where the gunmen will strike again, just as the attacks on INEX facilities might hinder the conduct of the 2023 election in the region. All right, I have with me in the studio a security consultant, Dalentin Umaru, and public affairs analyst, uh, Ziggy Ibe. They're all here uh, in the studio to uh, help us make sense of all of this. Gentlemen, good morning. Good to see you all. Morning, uh, Mike. Thank you. Great. pleasure Thank you. always. Good uh, to see you. Being Thank here. You. All right. And uh, joining me from, via Zoom from Makurdi is INEX National Commissioner for Information and Voter Education, Festus Okuye. Mr. Okuye, it's good to have you join us this morning. Yeah, good morning. Great. Uh, I'm going to start with you for obvious reasons uh, th this morning. Now, the issue, the issue there is a lot of people are very concerned that this, this continuous or it, it seems like a continuous attack on INEC headquarters could impact on the conduct of the elections. And uh, the, if you recall what uh, Governor of, of Imo State said, uh, Hopu Zodima, he said that there are people that is politically motivated, that there are people who don't want the election to hold. Yet on your part, you have addressed the nation several times and said that election will hold. You, you keep giving uh, hope to all Nigerians that elections will hold. But talk to us from the window of this continuous attack on, on INEC facility. How is it impacting and how are you ensuring that the fact that INEC office is attacked, one or two items could have been destroyed. What hope do, do Nigerians have that the election will still hold the way it's supposed to hold? Nigerians should be positive that elections will hold. It is in the collective interest of all Nigerians and also in the interest of the entire West Africa uh, that Nigeria holds elections and holds a very successful election. Uh, this is because the consequences of not holding election and even not holding it on schedule uh, will, be, uh, uh, will be great for the people of this country. Uh, it will throw the, the country into a constitutional crisis whose outcome uh, nobody can predict. Uh, so we are determined, yes, I, I, I'm saying that we are concerned about these attacks. We are concerned about the impact of these attacks. But from the commission's point of view, we see some of these attacks as a systematic uh, and coordinated attempt to de de delegitimize the commission, delegitimize the, the electoral process. So these attacks are really an attack on our electoral process. It's an attack on democracy. And also it's an attack on our cherished values. Uh, so we see from that particular uh, point of view, yes, there's a possibility that the commission has the capacity uh, to replace the items that have been damaged and also to recover uh, quickly. But if these attacks go beyond the month of December, it will be difficult for us uh, to begin uh, to move our materials and uh, other uh, paraphernalia, paraphernalia required for the conduct of elections uh, to site. This is because the chairman has promised the nation that never again under his watch will any election be postponed on grounds of uh, logistics or logistics challenges. And so we have even moved over 50% of the materials required for the conduct of uh, the 2023 general election to location. So these attacks are a good distraction. These attacks are drawing us back from preparing and preparing well uh, for the 2023 uh, general election. So we see it from that particular perspective. It's an attack on our electoral process, and also it's an attack on democracy. And it's also an attack meant deliberately and systematically to prevent the commission uh, from uh, giving Nigerians uh, the best election ever. All right. Well, I'll come back to you shortly. Uh, so you, you, because you said if this continuous attack, if they continue beyond December, the implication could be uh, different. Now, Darlington, 
the some people have said like let me quote uh, governor of Imo state he said that uh, there are people is a political uh, politically motivated attacks uh, against INEC and some people don't want the election to hold and so on. Speak to us from that window uh, where some people want to have control of the system, yet they don't want to partake in the election. If what the governor is anything, if, the gov if what the governor said is anything to go by. Those were his words. Uh, he said some, it's uh, political, not just politically motivated, that uh, some do not want to go through the electioneering process, but yet they want to win elections. Mm. Those were his words. My dismay is the position of the governor at each time we have situations like this. It's not the first time he's blaming it on politicians, fellow politicians in Nemo State. I do not know why he's shying away from the activities of in parenthesis, the unknown government activities. What is really the issue? We have heard, we have seen situations in the past where a body had said that no member or no indigenous from that part of the country should participate in election conducted by Nigeria. In, the, in, in, in 2019, we had some of these activities, we had some, of, some statements trying to stop some persons from contesting elections. And so if the governor kept blaming situations like this on fellow politicians, then he is not going anywhere. I do not know why first he's quick to conclusion, not waiting for outcomes of investigations. Two, why is really not looking at it from the point of view from statements, antecedents made by certain persons in the past? And so to me, it is not enough to quickly shift blames to politicians. Why not allow the security agencies to do their job? Allow them to carry on the investigation and then conclude. Give you a statement from whatever, from Intel, to tell you who and who was responsible. Some persons were arrested, about two. Mm -hmm. Three were killed, uh, a policeman lost his life, one is not seeing a bullet wound injury at the moment. Okay, so we're talking about that. And we have in the studio, uh, Darlington Numoro, a security consultant. We also have a Ziggy B, uh, a, a public affairs analyst. And joining us from Makodi, we have the INEC Commissioner for Information and Voter Education, uh, Festus Okoye. Uh, joining us to make sense of all of these uh, issues. Now, uh, Darlington, you, you were wrapping up on, the, on your idea earlier. Yes, talking about the position of the oh, governor, the governor his conclusion. Mm -hmm. I was saying that uh, the, government, the governor was actually too quick in jumping into conclusions, and it has become um, um, a ready-made response uh, each time uh, we have uh, issues in uh, Imo State. I'm saying this is about the third in, in three weeks that the INEC facility will be attacked. Mm -hmm. And then we have also uh, seen situations where IPOB in the past had, had said that before this election, that elections should not hold, the people should not participate in election holding. And don't forget, during the registration of the voters' card, we had an attack in Imo State where it's, it's a unit where people were uh, going to carry out their lawful and legal uh, registration mm -hmm. with the INEC officials. That place was attacked. And what, what was the same statement of the governor? Over time, the governor is beginning to sound like a broken record to me. Because to me, I expected that as, a, as the chief security officer of Imo State, he should have waited to be briefed on the basis of intel, or he should have also waited for the police to come up with uh, the, their findings, to say this and this is, these are the persons responsible for this and these attacks. We have also seen situations in other places where a political party was <coughs> blaming another political party for an attack of the office or, it, we cannot go on like this. Mm. But, but on the other hand, if, if, like you call him the chief security officer of the state, is it not also possible that what he's saying is part of what it is? That if, if some persons are known gunmen, what if they are sponsored by some politicians who feel that 
the, the, the way we are seeing this thing, we might not win. So let's just destroy the system. Then he has to stop, substantiate that. Right. It's not a new, is it my, my grouse, a particular governor, also made a statement uh, recently. You know, when you say politicians are involved, mm. we are tired. The police are no spirits. They want information to work. What is intel? And how do they gather intel? It is information you give to them plus analysis that turns to intel. So give us the names. We are tired. Right. 2023 is just by the corner. What are we talking about? Allow security agencies to do their legal responsibility, uh, their, uh, their legal jobs as provided by the constitution while you play your own role. We, I am tired of it. Some persons, we are shying away from the truth. In Enugu State, look at what happened. A certain a person said, sit at home between 9th and, and, and 13th or 14th recently. Why do we have all of this? Proliferation of small arms and light weapons has become a norm in the southeast. Must we continue this way? Now they are expressing the, the INEC of, uh, uh, official just expressed fear now that if it lingers, that there might be issues of difference, the disenfranchising some persons. That's the implication. Not just disenfranchising some persons now. Materials that have already been deposited in those places will be destroyed and may not be recovered before the election. The implication is that some persons might not have the uh, opportunity of voting. Okay. What are the security agencies? Allow them to do their job. All right. L let me bring uh, Ziggy into all of this. Now, when we talk about unknown gunmen and all of these things, it is, it is very quick, especially when it happens in the southeast, it is very quick for an average person to say, okay, it's IP, it's IP or IPOB as the case may be. But we've seen statements from IPOB and even uh, uh, the leader, uh, uh, Namdi Kano at the time saying uh, dissociating themselves from some of these elements here and there. But how does this compound the situation in, in the Southeast? Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, it's getting too worrisome. It is one attack too many. And um, I will squarely lay the blame of the whole of this on the tables of Southeast governors rather than singling out a governor. Um, why, why is that? He, 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 when he, he when, when, when all security agencies report to Abuja? They are the chief security officers of their states, in of name. their respective states. Yeah. And what that means is that if all the governors should come together, what is governor's forum about? They have regional governor's forum too. Mm. You remember at a point when we had issues in Lagos State, in, um, in Southwest, the Southwest region, regional governors, come together and form a coalition. Because in each of these states, the governors are the chief security officer. That means they stand in the point of knowledge of anything that happens in their respective states. To me, what the governor is supposed to do is to layers with their state security agencies, then come together and form a coalition, a security coalition, where they bring in all the state um, security apparatus and all that to really forestall this. Imo State, Anambra, Enugu, and other rest of the um, um, uh, southern states should form a committee, should work towards nipping this. They can do it. I will tell you that they are not doing enough. <laughs> since we started this, since this issue started in the southwest region, the governors have not seen South it. Southeast, I mean. Mm. The governors have not deemed it fit to come together. Of course, if they did, we would see it on the paper. Yeah, but they created a but Bubiago. They came where together is it, to create a Bubiago. Bubiago is only, exactly. is only yeah. prominence exactly. in, in, uh, in Imo State. A little of it was at uh, uh, Eboy. Eboy. Mm. The two other states don't have it. We don't have their prominence. They, have, they don't have anything like that in other states. Okay, now you've created a, a, a security outfit. How well are you funding them? How well are you making them to work to counter the activities of these uh, deadly boys? Okay? The five governors are not doing enough. Each time there's 
an attack this way, Enugu State Governor will speak on his own. Sometimes he doesn't even talk. I've never heard him talk about it. Anambra State Governor talks a little. It is, has been only Imo uh, that has been shouting. And we are saying, what is wrong? All of you coming together, synergize, interface with the security agencies. Because security issues are not uh, uh, coming to Piazza and, and talk. It is working at the, at, the, at the behind. They are not doing so. But if they are doing, we've not seen the effect. Now, this recent attack, attack is becoming too many. And we've all, we are just talking about it. Attack has been, if we begin to think that, uh, yes, it's because election. No, I don't think so, because we've, been, we've had multitude attacks in the past. So those times we are not uh, getting closer to elections. We are beginning to see this because maybe during Yuletide and all that. But if these guys say there will be no election in the Southeast, have the governors who are the chief security officer come together and say, what do you, in way of, in the North, We've had the governors try to negotiate with, their, with, the, with, the, with the bandits. Try to do one or two things to really calm them down. Try to do one or two things to really douse the tension. And the time we are now is very is, is, is at the, as the nick of things mm -hmm. that they need to do something very serious. All right. I should think the governors should come together and really do the needful. Well, they, they've been meeting. The governors in the south have seen been meeting. That. Uh, governor, they only met once. Governor only Dave, met once. Governor Dave Umahi of uh, of Ebony yeah, State is the chairman of the of the governors forum in the southeast, south and yes. they've been meeting. From the reports yes. we've been getting, they've been but meeting. But we've not got we've not got a result. Mm. Uh, right. So that means their meeting is, uh, is, is equal to nothing. Uh, well, <laughs> one may not yeah. conclude like that. So but, if there is no improvement, if there's no, uh, um, there no, mm -hmm. there no um, results and all that, so your meeting is next to nothing. All right, let, let me bring uh, Festus back on here, the uh, INEC Commissioner for Information and, and Voter Education. Now, you, you made a point earlier that uh, we are receiving... Uh, comments from Nigerians on social media already uh, uh, when it comes to, you say, if, if these attacks continue beyond December, create that scenario for us and put things in, in context so that people understand exactly what the implication could be if we have this uh, continuous attacks on INEC facility or INEC offices in the Southeast. The point I'm making is this. The ballot boxes that will be used for the election, the voting cubicles and other uh, um, uh, uh, materials uh, have to be moved to site as quickly as possible. And so what we normally do is that the contractors that um, either import some of these materials or manufacture some of these materials or have uh, access to some of these materials, start bringing in these materials. First of all, these materials uh, we come to either INEC headquarters or to Arizona stores, and then they are moved to the state headquarters and then distributed to the various local governments. So they start batching these materials in accordance with the various registration areas to get them ready for the election. As I was trying to point out, we already delivered 50% of these uh, non-sensitive materials uh, to, lo to location. Uh, this is because we want to get all these materials ready at least by January uh, so that by the time we are entering February, the, election, the proper election period, we are sure that all the sensitive materials required for the conduct of the election are already in the various, um, various local governments. So we don't need to worry. And if there are usable materials left behind, we will package those materials and use them as redundancies in case there's a, a challenge. But if these attacks continue, if our materials that have been already been delivered are going up in flames, uh, the implication is that we have to begin to source for additional materials to replace those that have been bought. Uh, bought. Now, some of these materials are not manufactured overnight. Some of these materials are not gotten off the, off the shelf. And so when you want these materials, we have to go back to the manufacturers and go on another fresh. And sometimes it takes three months, sometimes it takes six months. And so that's what I'm saying. We already have redundancies. That's why we could replace... The, the, the ones burnt in um, Abiyokuta South local government area. That's why we can replace the ones burnt in Izi, a local government. That's why we can replace the ones burnt, burnt in Olo and then 
uh, you know, in Oru West local government areas. But if these attacks continue beyond this period, there are two issues involved. One, it may be difficult for us to replace these materials. Secondly, it may also be difficult for us to move the remaining materials to location on time to enable us to organize and organize properly uh, for the conduct of election. And not only that, we also have sensitive materials that we are bringing in. We have our beavers that have to come in and have to move to certain locations at a certain point in time. And then we have other sensitive materials that are, must also move to location at a certain point in time to enable us have complete hold of the processes and procedures uh, for the conduct of election. That's why I'm saying that if these attacks extend beyond December, it may have very uh, uh, grave consequences uh, on our preparations for the conduct of elections. But whether we are resolved to proceed with this election, we are resolved to proceed with this election because, as I pointed out, uh, not proceeding is not even on the table. And so we must proceed with preparations uh, for the conduct of this election. Okay. I, I believe that INEC would have sat down and all of you would have sat down to look at the implication and created scenarios and so on. But as it is, what are you doing? What is INEC doing regarding safeguarding the, uh, and protecting uh, INEC facilities in the southeast when it comes to working with security agent, agencies and agents to ensure the safety of materials, ensure the safety of, uh, of, of your staff in the southeast and so on? Can you share with us what's going on? We sat down with the various the leadership of the various security agencies under the auspices of the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security. We also sat down with the leaders of the political parties, civil society groups and organizations, and the media. And for our sensitive elect election materials, we adopted a two-track two strategy, a hybrid strategy. One, that the BFAS will remain with the Independent National Electoral Commission and be protected by the various security agencies while the ballot papers and, um, and resources we still remain with the, with, the, with the central bank. That was the agreement that was reached. In relation to our state offices and the 734 uh, local government offices, we agreed mutually um, with the security agencies that security around our state offices will be fortified. And in most of the offices, they have fortified the security. We also agreed that they will also scale up on intelligence gathering and, 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 and sharing of information relating to potential threats uh, to our various local government offices. We also agreed that the various security agencies will also move and fortify our local government offices to enable us move materials uh, to site. This was the agreement that um, was reached. And I think that uh, the success recorded by the security agencies on the attack on our headquarters um, in, 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 in Imo uh, is part of the strategy that the security agencies uh, have adopted. And we, we hope, hopefully, uh, they will extract enough information uh, from those they arrested as to the motives behind some of these attacks, as to why these attacks, especially in a place like Imo, has become systematic. If you look at the attack in, in Imo, for instance, the, the first attack we recorded after the 2019 general election was on the third day of February 2019 in our Olu local government office. It was burned down because there was the court order the rerun election. Now, sometime in the in the in December, I think on the on the first of December, the same office was being renovated and it was also attacked and the whatever was remaining of the renovation was also burned, burned down. And so we need to know why these attacks have become systematic, why these attacks have become coordinated, what, what are the motives of the, the attackers, and so that we can understand where they are coming from and also plan uh, strategies on how to uh, safeguard our materials and proceed assiduously with the preparations for the conduct of the uh, 2023 uh, general election. Mm. All right, Dalentin, uh, some people have talked about the need to negotiate. You know, they, they said, Let, let's, why don't government negotiate with these people to see how they can come up with the final solution to Which this? people exactly now? Okay, all the elements within the place. Because like I was, I was, I was uh, saying earlier, people assume that IPOB or IPOB is the one behind attacks in the southeast. But of course, at the, there are times where we have had IP, IPOB said, well, those people are not part of us, you know, has complicated the whole issue. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to negotiation, 
if it is negotiated in such a way that IPOB that led the whole of that uh, idea in the first place is negotiated with, where they themselves, because they have network on the ground, yeah. they can, uh, you know, say, okay, yeah, this is for us and people. this is not for us, yeah. and then they work with government in that regard. Anyway, the way you are smiling, well, it tells that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm smiling uh, because, um, you see, in the southeast, the <coughs> IPOB started what they can no longer handle. Mm. If you want to juxtapose IPOB's statement today against their, in their beginning, and then you begin to wonder why would IPOB at this point in time, they are created ESN. ESN, they created, they told us, was to help the security agencies tackle bandits that were infiltrating the Southeast. Was that really the purpose? He talked about the governors and not having, not coming together to set up a security outfit that could attack or conquer some of these uh, challenges. And quickly, I saw you. I, I, what came to my mind was Ebubiago, mm. and I saw you writing Ebubiago, <laughs> and I smiled. <laughs> Ebubiago was actually horridly put together by the Southeast Governors Forum, so put, supposedly to checkmate the activities of the ESN that was creating a menace at a time in the Southeast. You see, IPOB started well by agitating. The same thing we had from uh, the man of the blessed memory, Odumegu Ojuku, asking for a Biafra. But today, we, had, we got statements from their leader, Namde Kanu, while he was away. And some of these statements were instigating violence. Some of these statements came on the radio, the Biafra radio, and created a lot of problems. And then they recruited and then created the Eastern Security Network. Okay? And we know that Imo State had been the hub of activities for this body. And we know that Olu particularly suffered a lot because the Olu, according to security reports, became the center of that body, that organization created. And then a lot of persons had been arrested that made confessions to the security agents. That's why I, I, was, I, I frowned at the governor jumping into conclusion you know, immediately. Like, the, like I said initially, that was corroborated by Festus. Some persons have been arrested. Mm. They are expected to make confessional statements to the security agents, which will further help in curbing subsequent... When you talk about intel, you need to beef up intel. Information you get from all of these persons and arrests that will further be made will help boost intel. And then subsequently you will have an idea of what is their next plan would be. Where are they also thinking of attacking next? It's not as if the thing is limited to the southeast, but it is more prominent in Imo state. We had in Ogo state, we had in Ondo state, it moved to Imo state, it, it was in Imo state, and then look at that occurrences. And then it gives the security agencies an idea. And then look at the way it is going on in those local governments, Olu, Oru, Oweri. Okay? In two weeks, in December. And so what is the issue? During registration, it also happened. What is the issue? You try to put on me that perhaps if this could be something sponsored by politicians, we have had that. If the governor, I have challenged the Imo State governor here some time ago when they kept telling us fellow politicians, we know them. It is not about we know them. About we know them cannot bring a heart to it. 
Lives are being wasted. Resources are being wasted. Name the persons you know. Give the names privately to security agents. They would be investigated and perhaps be arrested and be prosecuted if enough evidences are found. Enough of stomaching all of this and talking to Nigerians in riddles. Lives here are at stake. INEC officials' lives are at stake. You NYSC members' lives are at stake. Our yeah. uh, children who go to school, graduated, and they want to serve, further serve the nation through INEC. Many of them have been killed in the past. We are talking about not what had happened, but what is likely going to happen in 2023, where you're going to have the general elections. What is Peter Obi statement on all of this at this time? What are the political leaders saying at this time? You're talking about negotiation. Beautiful. The Southeastern governors, the Southeastern leaders, the traditional rulers are out of it because they are being wasted. They are no longer recognized. How many of them have been killed in Imo State? Traditional rulers who are supposed to be leaders of the grassroots, at the grassroots. Yeah, but when you mentioned Peter B, I wonder what... Uh... What his st statement will make a difference here yeah, because he, he is contesting the president of Nigeria. He's from this is, is to so, me so much. to me he's from the southeast. Yes. Yeah, but but no, you, hang but, on, but, Mike. But he's not the candidate hang, of the southeast. Hang on, Mike. Yeah. Hang on, Mike. Okay, he is from the southeast. At a point in time, one of the elements came up with a statement that if you don't give Peter Obi the candidacy of that a party, that there will be chaos. And so it meant that they, would have, they, they could listen to him. If he makes a statement now and says, please halt, what you are doing could affect votes for me, from the, my own tribe, from my own people. You think they cannot? They wouldn't listen to him. All right, that that that's that's that could be interpreted in so many different ways. That, uh, but but anyway, let let's leave it there because I wouldn't want us to debate. <laughs> because the point there is, Peter will be the fact that he comes from the southeast. He's not the pre he's not he's not a president presidential he's candidate president. of of the southeast. Yeah. As he is concerned, it's the same way uh, Atiku Abubakar of the of the PDP will be concerned. It's the same way. Uh, Bola Metinubu of the APC will be concerned. It's the same way Rabbi Musa Kwankwaso will become, uh, you know, concerned. So all presidential candidates, because where there is chaos, any part of this country... Express this concern. Mm. Political leaders should also express this concern. All right. It is not just enough for the common man to be expressing the concern. That was why he was talking about the concern mm. of the Southeast governors, okay. who are supposedly... The, the, the chief security officers of their state. All right. Uh, Z Ziggy, the, this issue of sit at home is, is still there, where a lot of people across the, the, the southeast are still suffering from that issue of sit at home. Now, talk to us from this window as this continues. And a lot of people are saying, of course, when it comes to voter mobilization, you're going to mobilize people on a daily basis. And the sit at home order could uh, impact a lot of people. People are already living in fear. Um, you don't talk about the attacks without talking about the fears that have been inst instilled mm. in the people. Yeah. And uh, during the electionary period, a lot have been um, garnered into making it work mm. for the safety of the whole processes. Mm. And like you said, um, I wouldn't want to not talk about it because um, a leader is a leader in every sense of it. If a leader from that region, you know, it is the, the, the conspiracy that really gave rise to all of this. The leaders were not talking initially. They were not talking. Even till now, I've not even seen their voices. Since they've all lost their voices. Yes, they were hiding under the clothes that they wouldn't want to be killed. Yeah, like you said, so many traditional rulers have been killed. But do you still keep quiet because you, you wouldn't want to be killed and have other areas of your life subsumed in an issue like this? The leaders are not doing enough. They are not. 
negotiate with these people. Yes, like you said, they can be negotiated. Because initially, when IPOP started, with time, they started having splinters. Until now, IPOP is saying the attacks are not coming from us. It's coming from a particular group. That means we've had another group apart from um, IPOP. Mm, that's why they are unknown gunmen. That's why they are unknown gunmen. <laughs> now, the governors on their own rose from a different angle and said, look, these attacks are too many. Let's create um, a, a, a counter-attack. That's when a Bubago was, um, was created. Whether what happened to Ibubagu is what I cannot say as I'm sitting here. Because so many places, so many uh, states, Ibubagu is not pronounced there. They are not saying. Get these people on the... Yes, they are human beings. We hear them. Recently, this five-day uh, sit-at-home was uh, instructed by one, one man from... Uh, from um, where is the uh, uh, country again? One Ekpa. Mm -hmm. Simon Ekpa. Who ordered this sit at home, five days sit at home. Look, when these people are making various statements coming from different places and all that, it looks the region has no direction. But we have one person from there who wants to be a, a, a president of this country. What has he said? Like he said, what has he said? Has he come up to condemn the activities of these people? Or you want to slaughter the, 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 the feelings of the people on the altar of uh, his uh, candidacy? Because he has not spoken. He has not said anything. Who knows? His speech could make a difference. Make a national speech. Call uh, 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 people and state your opinion. Categor be categorical about it. Be specific mm. about it. Have a this stance. is what you have. Have a stance mm. about it. You are mute. Or mute even for make what? an appeal. Mute appeal. for what? What about coming out as a man from that region and tell them categorically that this thing would impact negatively on my candidature, on my candidacy? Mm. Please stop it. That is that you, is if the people are in support of him. Whether they are in support or not, but let's hear him talk. Let him appeal to their conscience. Let him speak. Then meet all the governors. He can do it because we're a leader. Look, the bulk of what we are seeing you do now is the totality of what you are going to give to Nigerians when you are there. Why do we ask the leaders to begin to talk to us? Town hall meetings, granting interviews, and all that. It's because we want you to speak. Because it's an offshoot or a, 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 a predomination of what we are going to see you do when you are sworn in. If you are not talking like this, that means when you are there, you might not speak. Things will be passing through you like this and uh, you will be looking. That is not it. Okay. So I think he's, he's not getting the right thing. Not only him, other uh, presidential uh, uh, candidates should uh, come up and condemn this in totality. You remember when Deborah died, when Deborah was killed? In, in, so in Sokoto. In Sokoto. Um, uh, um, what's the name? Uh, this presidential candidate. The, the PDP the president. The PDP presidential Atiku candidate. Atiku Abubaka. Deleted his, uh, uh, his, um, his online uh, social media uh, uh, words. The tweets. And Nigeria came in condemnation of it. Look at how he ruggled himself out of it. Mm. But that, he said he didn't authorize it. Yeah, you know, he said he didn't authorize it. But then he would have left it there. So that Nigeria will know that you are in total condemnation because they believe that this is your faith. Okay. And you let, want to promote your faith by not doing that. Yeah, because of time. Let me bring uh, Festus back in here so that we can uh, just touch a few things uh, before he goes or before we go. Now, Festus, the, the, these attacks uh, that uh, are, are up against INEC this way that Nigerians are condemning, of course, one would say that uh, a lot of materials, a lot of resources, finances are going into it. How would this impact on the budget of INEC? Because you talked about the issue of replacing some of these things uh, that have been destroyed. Will INEC re request for supplement supplementary budget, or how, how is it going? Or you have enough resources already to uh, cater for those things without the supplementary? When we begin to plan and begin to plan for any election, uh, we do a markup of a certain percentage. In other words, uh, if we are supposed to procure uh, uh, 1,000 ballot papers, uh, sometimes uh, ballot boxes, uh, sometimes we procure uh, 1,200, 
in case of um, any, any challenge, in case of any emergency, uh, so that we can respond and respond quickly. The point I've, I've been making and I continue to make is that for the attacks that have taken place, we have enough redundancies to recover, to replace them. But if these attacks continue, what that means is that we have exhausted the, result, the redundancies we have. And that means we have to go and do another procurement, which we do not have the time to do, which we do not have the resources um, uh, uh, to, to, to carry out. And so we urge the various security agencies to intensify surveillance around our offices, to intensify uh, security around our offices, uh, so that these attacks can stop. Uh, because um, our, some of our staff, um, especially in some of these places where these attacks have taken place, uh, have moved to a different locations, and some of them uh, uh, are living in fear. And so, and the people from some of these areas, there, there's a siege mentality, there's an atmosphere of fear and anxiety that has enveloped them. And this atmosphere of fear and anxiety may lead to voter suppression uh, during the election. And we do not want this. We want Nigerians to engage the process. We want Nigerians to come out and vote. We want Nigerians to own this particular process. And also, we want Nigerians to do this country proud by making sure that they engage the electoral process and get, so that Nigeria can have a very, very good election in 2023. So as of now, we have the capacity to recover. But if it continues, it may pose a very big problem uh, to the electoral management body. All right. Uh, just for emphasis sake, uh, you have started giving out the PVCs. When is the ending? There are two trajectories to the giving out of the PVC. Mm. From uh, 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 Monday, which was the, which is the twelfth, we are going to distribute these PVCs from the twelfth day of January, uh, uh, from the twelfth day of December, uh, twenty twenty two, up to the twenty second day of January, uh, twenty twenty, uh, up to the twenty second day of January, twenty twenty three. Now, from the sixth day of January to the fifteenth day of January, this collection we move from our state offices to the eight thousand eight hundred and nine. Uh, registration areas or wards. And then after the 15th, on the 16th, it moves back to the local government offices and then ends on the 22nd day of uh, January okay. uh, 2022. All and right. so people have a window, a, a very good window to collect. We advise people not to rush um, as if the collection of PVCs we end today. Okay. They have up to the 22nd day of January to collect. And right. for those who are unable to go to our local government offices on the sixth day of January, we move it closer to them, to the electoral electoral wards, and then we we'll remain there for, for a week before we go back to the various local government offices and end on the 22nd day of January, uh, 2023. All right. Thank you very much. So the wisdom is start collecting now from wherever you are. Thank you so much, Festus Okoye, INEC Commissioner for Information and Voter Education. We appreciate you. And uh, Darlington Umaru, thank, thank you so, you much, so much, much for coming as well. We really appreciate you. My thank pleasure. You. Any day. Yeah, Ziggy B, thank you very much for coming as well. My pleasure. Thank sir. you. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. All right.